the new competition, the proposed competition, has been out for about two or three weeks, which is about the time you take to work out how it works. Uh, does it excite you about this um, global expansion? Well, you know, not to be a stick in the mud, but it, honestly, it doesn't excite me at all. I think there's enough South African teams in there now, for God's sake. Argentina will bring nothing to this particular competition because it won't be their top players. It's a tremendously long trip to get there in a time zone that doesn't suit us. I think it's 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 poor. And th this team, perhaps Japan, mooted to be Japan, will clearly be weak unless it's bolstered by a whole lot of foreign players, in which case it would be meaningless. And it's it's just a commercial decision. It's To me, it's trying to make squeeze more money out of a competition which is already too big. Yes, they dressed it up with lots of good uh, rationale, but at the end of the day, it's, it's a matter of keeping the broadcaster happy and keeping South Africa in the mix. Well, as it is now, they start this competition. You have a few pre-season games in January, and then the competition kicks off. They have to; It's so long now, they have to break it in the middle so we can have a few test matches. Then they resume it again, and now it's going to be 18 teams. It's To me, it's farcical. That's one thing that does need to be fixed, this window we have for international football where you break this competition, which people are just getting into now and the games are getting tense and then suddenly we have to have a holiday. Yeah, um, I mean the English Premier League goes on for months and months and months and it builds, but you'd have to say that it's more interesting for most people. I mean some people are passionate about it the whole way, but for most people it's more interesting in the last month or the last six weeks as it's building towards the climax in whatever division you're following. And it is like that with the Super Rugby. I mean, whether they like it or not, February in New Zealand is a cricket month, not a rugby month, even March. And so, yes, you're right, it's just building up now and teams are, every match is worth double points almost. If you, if you, if you lose, it's, it's tragic now. And then we stop and have some test matches and get interested in the All Blacks and then, oh, we've got to go back to the Super Rugby and forget about the All Blacks. It's... it's a compromise solution that's not working and I think the answer is to get the Super Rugby into a shorter time frame. Having said that, of course, that won't bring in enough broadcasting money. Another competition that's looking at tweaking is the ANZ Championship, uh, which is interesting. The logical suggestion was to go to a two-round uh, home-and-away basis, but uh, they're moving to talking about expansion, talking about more teams in the, in the playoffs. So, uh, it was, for a small competition, that surprises me. Yes, well the first thing is you wouldn't want to put any more teams in that competition full stop because New Zealand now had, seems to have one team too many, whether it's the pulse previously or the tactics now, there seems to be one New Zealand team which just doesn't foot it uh, and it's unfair to the Australians who, who, are, who are strong. Um, and then already four teams out of ten are making the playoffs. If you make any more, you're actually, all you're doing is... is is trying playing a whole round robin plus to find out a couple of teams who won't carry on. It's it's makes a playoffs not really a playoffs. It makes it makes it like the the preliminary part of the season, which is the major part of the season, is all that's about is eliminating a couple of teams. With the post doing well, they might get on their own merits this year, and I think it's more prestigious if there's just four spots to sneak into. Four is plenty. I mean, in years gone by, it would have been two. It, two teams to play a final. Four is plenty, uh, more than enough, I think, especially the way they structure it, where to, if you're the fourth qualifier, you have to get to win three games to, to win the title. So that's plenty. Incidentally, I don't think the Pulse will make it. I think they'll miss by one game again. Yeah, well, and it's, it's time will tell. There's an interesting run to the line. But uh, Wellington did win one national competition after all. The one-day cricket cup, didn't they? Yeah, they won it at the end of March. And, and honestly, it was hard... Even cricket followers in Wellington didn't know they'd won it. It was sort of an anonymous win. It's in there, and, and they did win it, and good on them. And they played well, actually, at the end to win a whole lot of games back-to-back. -back. So, great. Credit to James Franklin, who captained them very well, actually. But, I'll tell you, it made no impression whatsoever in Wellington winning that title. It does look like you've got a, those cricket one-day T20 competitions got to conclude maybe in January or February with the height of the cricket season is being followed. Once it gets muddied with rugby and the Test Series is over, it does disappear. It did. It really disappeared. I mean, um, I remember talking to someone who, who likes cricket and I said, oh, that was good we won the um, the one-day competition. He said, oh, no, what was that all about? He had no idea at all. It had, it had truly disappeared and that by, by late March, Super Rugby was starting to be part of the landscape again. All right, let's uh, look forward to a few world competitions. We'll start with the Commonwealth Games and your level of interest and excitement uh, what, we're only a month or so away? 
Yeah, I'm very excited. Well, I'm going over there, as I usually do to the Com Games. And Is that why you're excited, or are you excited about the sporting competition? No, I really like it. Um, I mean, I wrote a column about this a few weeks ago. In some of the sports, like like uh, netball and and probably lawn bowls and sevens, it's it's really a world competition, pretty much ninety five percent. It's like a world title, and in some other sports, like um, just picking a couple, swimming or sprinting, uh, athletic sprinting, squash, it's very major. Like there's a lot of good. It's not a world competition, but there's a very high level. So that's great. And then there are a few other sports where the, the level is low in terms of the world. You could pick, say, shooting or something like that. Well, whatever, That's the, the New Zealanders who compete in those sports, that's probably as good a, a level as they'll ever reach, and this is their world title. So it's quite meaningful sport to me, and I actually just really enjoy being at a Commonwealth Games because everyone speaks English. It's lower key than the Olympics without terrible... Um, rights issues and branding issues and the hype so it's quite a pleasant fortnight and with some good sport so yeah i'm really looking forward to it and reasonably familiar surroundings uh, glasgow it's, it's really uh new zealand friendly i would suspect i've got very good memories of glasgow because i spent uh, a fortnight there uh when new zealand won the world netball title in 1987 no team got within 10 goals of them so um, that, that was a good fortnight, and uh, if, if, if this New Zealand team does half as well during the Commonwealth Games, that will be fine with me. I was surprised to read in one of the promotions for the Commonwealth Games, Fulbert Bayes' uh, 1500 metre record is still the record, uh, Commonwealth record in that race. I know there's probably only been like eight races since then or whatever, but that's still uh, quite startling given how the progress is made on the track. Yeah, but um, Peter Snell's world record set in 1962 would still um, be winning Olympic medals now. I mean, they're world records in their time, and, you know, in these major finals, they're not often running world record time. That Bai Walker showdown was really exceptional, which is why it's one of the greatest races of all time. Usually these finals come down to everyone's jockeying for position and watching each other, and the time is irrelevant and, and usually very slow. So I'm not surprised. I mean, Dick Taylor ran very well to win the 10,000 metres in 1974, and the time that he ran has only been beaten once as well, uh, once ever. Uh, and, you know, there's been a lot of good African distance runners since then. It's a great way to spot talent for New Zealand, isn't it, to work out those who have got Olympic potential and those really who haven't. If you can't win or final here, you're not going to make much progress elsewhere. Yeah, and um, without going into it too much, I mean, there's a never-ending stream of New Zealand sports stars who, who really kicked off their careers at a Com Games, like John Walker, uh, who went on to Olympic glory. So it's it's you don't send athletes there just to blood them, but it is a good um, a litmus test for them. If they can f perform at that level, then maybe they do have the makings of a world or Olympic champion. Let's move on to the World Cup, the World Soccer Cup. Um... There's always talk that stadiums aren't ready, the country's not ready. This comes to every Olympics, just about just about every World Cup soccer. But have you actually been to one where people haven't been ready for a major event? Um, well, uh, just just going through that slightly, it would. I think we, the Chinese were very ready in 2008 for the Beijing Olympics. I think they could have held them in 2004. Mm -hmm. And Sydney were pretty good too for 2000. In London? London was okay, but Athens, they were still um, um, paving the motorways when we arrived and fixing the rail tracks and so on to get the public out to the stadium. So they weren't quite ready. And certainly Delhi, they, w they weren't quite ready when they finished uh, the Com Games. They, weren't, they still weren't quite... For, they were, the, the, um, some of the village restaurants were still being completed on the last day. Uh, so they weren't ready. But I take your point that overall... There's all these media-inspired horror stories about how nothing will be ready. And, you know, when you look back through the record books, they all, all those events get held perfectly fine.